In this demonstration, I'm going to continue the development of the sales performance report by enhancing it with some uh, data visualizations. Specifically, let's take a look at how we can add data bars and indicators to complete the design of this report. This is where I left off earlier. I'm going to introduce a new column to the right of sales to provide a data bar. So at an easy glance, we can see relativity of sales within salespeople and even across the countries. So I right click the column guide and I insert a column to the right. To add a data bar, let me do this at salesperson level. I'm just gonna right click in this text box and then I'm gonna go ahead and insert data bar. Now, in fact, the data bar really is just a mini chart. And so I'll select the bar that we see here first, click OK, and it really does embed a chart inside the text box itself. Just another example of the hierarchical structure of your report layout. Now, when I click that chart, it opens up its own dedicated pane known as the chart data pane. And it's here that I'm going to add a value by clicking on this plus icon. Here it presents to me all of the fields from the DS main data set. And of course, the data bar is based on sales. So next, I would also like to add the data bar at country level. Not only do I want to see it for individual salespeople, but show it for the countries as well. Right click, insert, data bar. This is really simple. Well, it's simple for now. <laughs> So what we're going Come to see on, Peter, is... I'm trying to <laughs> show how some of this stuff is really very simple to do in Patch Error. The first one is simple, but we've got some consideration for the second one. Hmm. So first of all, we're going to add in the sales field. I'm happy to leave it as some, but if there was some logic that I wanted to push back to but there's the, not. Um, <laughs> then I would, but stay tuned. <laughs> and so that configures the second one, but probably using the same color isn't a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is I'll edit the series properties. So I click the down arrow for the sales series, open up the series properties, and here in the fill, I'm going to go ahead and set this to use perhaps a color like, I don't know, what should we do, a color like green. Good choice. Hmm. So green for country and blue for salesperson. Now, why all of a sudden do we have a white background for the data bar? Now, the fact is the white background is the charts background that is um, blocking the background <laughs> of the text box itself. So if and, I right click the chart. And this the, is exactly how people get confused. Yeah, so there's actually a chart inside the text box and the chart is overlaid over the text box. Yeah. So I'll come to the chart properties. What would be nice is that I could say use transparent, but we don't have that option. But here I just have to repeat the color, light gray, to achieve that background. You really should talk to the product owner about that. <laughs> All right, we've achieved the right result. Let's see what happens when we preview the report. How does it look? All right, nice. Wow. Yeah, so it was relatively straightforward. At the detail level, <laughs> not an issue. And it's just the color that was the problem. And that's how we solved it. So our next enhancement is to add an indicator at the very end. We'd like to see green for good, yellow for uh, off track, but not terrible, and red for off track. So I'm going to add in a new column to the right of variance. Now watch what happens here. The new column, what's it done to the width <gasps> of my body? It's expanded it. All right, so the intention was that we were going to print this. Well, we've now got mm -hmm. double the number of pages. Yes. All right, so let's go ahead and ensure that the width here is set, I think, to 0.4. And then I'm going to drag that body back. All right, so I'm still within the width of a single page. Yeah, another thing to keep in mind, because when we say double the number of pages, you'll get some pages that have values on them and some that are just look terrible. <laughs> right. So at the detail row, let's right-click, insert, the data visualization, this time it's an indicator. It opens up the indicator type. Now, several things about this, you know, color is one way to communicate status, but we have to be aware that not all audiences um, have full color um, vision. That's true. Uh, so I like this one especially, and this one means that it's actually the shapes and color. Mm -hmm. So for those that don't have the benefit of color sight, um, they can use the shapes and still get um, meaning from the data. Yep. All right, so having selected it, it's added. It is just 
It's not actually a chart, it's a gauge, oddly enough. Yes. It's implementation. So when I click on here, we get the gauge data, and this is where I'm going to assign that it is that status. Recall that status was either negative one, zero, or one. Mm -hmm. Now the next stage is that we actually have to configure the indicator properties. How do those values map to the different shapes of the indicator? And that's done here on the values and states page. First of all, it's a direct mapping on number. There are the three icons. The red or the diamond, I'm just gonna map from start to end of negative one. You, know, you could have ranges, it might be from you know, passing an exam that if you're 80 to 100, you're green, if you're 50 to 80, you're yellow, anything below 50 is red. So here, the start and end happen to be the same. And so that maps the states of minus one to off track, zero to slightly off track, and one to on track. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and test that. Hmm. Okay, so we've got some reds. Notice they align to when we had negative percentages. When mm -hmm. it was slightly negative, we've got the yellow and positives are giving us the green. Mm -hmm. Now, if we want that indicator to be also at country level, I can select and I can copy and I can select the text box above and I can paste. We have the same issue with the background. Let's That's right. Fix that. Right click, come to the gauge panel properties, set and fill, but it's using the light gray background. Now this one we have to be super careful of. We cannot say sum of status. We have to push that aggregate oh, back to the model. I feel like you set me up there, Peter. I'm sorry, but I probably did. <laughs> <laughs> so now using our aggregate function, we're going to request what the status is at country level. And while I'm at it, why don't we do it for the entire organization? Copy, paste into the footer, again, change the gauge panel properties. The fill this time will be the silver color. And uh, it's still set to aggregate. So it should do as we would like it to do. Mm -hmm. Let's preview this result. And there we have it. So even at country and even at grand total level, We've got the indicator working for us. Yeah. All right, we've still got some more work to do, but at this stage, based on the theory that we've covered, um, that completes our demonstration for data visuals, visualizations using data bars and indicators. We've got another enhancement that will take place once we've introduced to you the interactivity features that you can add to your report designs. That will come next.